Good evening, everyone, and welcome to IABC London's first ever virtual Virtuoso Awards celebration. We're so pleased to have all of you leading communicators come together for an evening of recognition and celebration of the communications profession. My name is Robert DeLate. I'm this year's president-elect for IABC London, and I was last year's awards director. Oh, and we're already having some technical difficulties. Katie, you were muted. Whoops, it's going to be one of those nights. <laughs> and my name is Katie Forbes, IBC London Celebration Director. So firstly, let's address the elephant. It's been a year. We know that 2020 has been challenging for all of us and that our organizations have needed our support now more than ever. With that being said, we want to thank everyone for not only taking time out of their week tonight, but for upholding the standards of excellent communication all year long. Even though we can't all be together to celebrate in person, we are hopeful to be back in business as usual next year. With that being said, we hope everyone has a drink in hands and the comfiest seat in the house. Before we jump right into the program tonight, please be advised that all of your mics are muted for the event. However, please take advantage of that chat feature to cheer on your peers. Now, let's be honest, are you in your pajamas right now? Don't worry, we won't judge. We hope you have taken a chance on our drink recipe. The Virtuoso, or if you have something else in hand, tweet it to us at IBC London with the hashtag Virtuoso's back. Also, if you'd like to share moments from this evening and hype up your communications colleagues, use our hashtag Virtuoso's back and tag us so we can share too. We want to take a moment first to recognize our partners who have supported IABC London and the Virtuoso Awards in a big way. So first up, thank you to our gold level sponsor, TMD, the marketing department, for the outstanding visuals used this year. Thanks for, looking us, thanks for helping us look so stylish. And next up, thank you to Northern Commerce for ensuring we have an up-to-date website supporting our virtuoso entrance and uh, getting their entries into us. Next up, thank you to our silver level sponsor, Nothers the Award Store. Nothers is the generous producer of the Virtuoso Awards statuette and they helped us this year to get us in, uh, get these into the hands of our winners despite the global pandemic. Also, at the silver level is Fanshawe College, a longtime supporter of our chapter with a commitment to recognizing communications excellence. Finally, at the bronze level is Western University, another longtime supporter of our chapter. Each of our sponsors know and believe in the value of communication professionals to drive meaningful business results. For their continued support of IABC, London's Virtuoso Awards, we thank them tremendously. Now, let's check on our poll. Okay, so we'll check up on the, we'll check up on those results later on, okay? All right, so hashtag Virtuoso's back. The Virtuoso Awards are all about celebrating excellence in the communications profession through alignment to IABC London International's Gold Quill Awards and the Canadian Silverleaf Awards. Virtuoso recognizes strategic communications work that exceeds the global standards of the profession. And we know that in order to offer a program that celebrates excellence, the program itself needs to be excellent. This was a special year for Virtuoso on top of everything else, of course as it marked the program's big return after a year-long hiatus. We spent 2019 conducting a careful review of the program with engagement of our members and our stakeholders. We learned that you, our region's communications, marketing, and creative professionals value the Virtuoso Awards, but that you wanted to see some changes to the program, and we were more than happy to deliver. This year, we made a number of revisions, changes in eligibility, enhanced resources to support you in preparing an entry, staggered entry deadlines that provided flexibility and early bird cost savings, improved scoring, 
a completely revitalized evaluation process, and an enhanced recognition to celebrate our winners across our channels. We've heard some great feedback on these changes already, and we thank you for helping us to revise the program. It's only with your help that we're able to host this event tonight and celebrate the fact that Virtuoso is back. And now, without further ado, we're going to jump into some of those awards that we have. So first up, we want to recognize our Outstanding Communicator Award and Communications Champion finalists. What I personally love about these awards is that finalists are nominated directly by their team and their colleagues. Among our many changes this year, we revised our Outstanding Communicator Award to recognize a communications professional who exemplifies excellence in the profession by employing strategic planning and implementation to deliver on significant business results. The Outstanding Communicator is a leader in their organization and in their community, and they are committed to ethical standards and to professional development. Both of the professionals nominated and selected as finalists tonight represent those qualities and more. And we, as we announce our finalists, don't forget to cheer them on with virtual applause in our chat. So our first non a nominee is Mike Donaghy, Communications Manager at Libro Credit Union. And our second nominee is Julia Osterman, Chief Communications and Public Affairs at Blue Water Health. To complement the outstanding communicator, this year we've introduced a brand new award. The Communications Champion Award recognizes a supportive organizational leader who recognizes the value of communications as integral to in driving business results. The recipient is a leader who integrates communications as an internal strategic partner and supports the professional development with their communications team. With a strong commitment to their organization's values, they are also someone who works closely with their communicators to develop and deliver exceptional leadership communication. This year, we have three deserving Communications Champion Award finalists. Our first nominee is Mike LePayne, President and CEO of Blue Water Health. Our second nominee is Lynn Logan, Vice President of Operations and Finance at Western University. And last but not least, our third nominee is Daryl Longworth, Chief of Police with the Woodstock Police Service. We'll be hearing more about each of our outstanding communicator and communications champion finalists shortly. Stick around to learn this year's recipient for each award. So Katie, I'm wondering if we should check in on the results of that poll to see what people are wearing tonight. Let's see. Ooh, pretty even split. Business on the top, PJs on the bottom has won for this poll. Good for you guys. <laughs> All right, congrats to each of those finalists. Uh, we're now going to move into our student awards. So IBC London actively supports the professional development of communications and public relations students. As an industry, we're lucky that London is home college and Western University where tomorrow's leaders in communications develop their skills and grow their experience. There are four student awards that will be, will be presented tonight, and they exist because of the commitment and generosity of local sponsors, TMD, the marketing department, Canada Life, and Western Continuing Studies. Each recipient will receive a $500 award. The first, from Fanshawe College's Public Relations and Corporate Communications Graduate Certificate Program. Congratulations to Lauren Dan, for winning the 2020 Canada Life Student Award of Excellence. Lauren is also the recipient of the 2020 Canada Life Leadership Award. Way to go, Lauren, on both awards. Next up, congratulations to Carly Vanderwerf from Fanshawe College's Graphic Design Advanced Diploma Program. Carly has won the 2020 TMD Award for Academic Excellence in Graphic Design. And the final winner of our student award goes to Cynthia Yi for winning the 2020 Western Continuing Studies Public Relations Student Award of Excellence. A big accomplishment for all of our student winners. Congratulations. Before we move on to our virtual so award winners, let's take a moment to hear a little bit about our Outstanding Communicator Award finalist, Mike Donaghy. When we talk about outstanding communication, it's really important that we understand that this is something that uh, permeates every aspect of our lives. This isn't just a business thing. 
it's a story that we feel Oops, it looks like we're having some audio difficulties. All right, let's try to rewind that and see if it's a bit better. When we talk about outstanding communication, it's really important that we understand that this is something that um, permeates every aspect of our lives. This isn't just a business thing. It's a story that we feel the need to tell. Passion brings power to communications. Passionate communications should be instinctive because you care about what you're doing. And that's ingrained in us. That's ingrained in us more than our culture or more than any other aspect of us. That's ingrained in us as a species at the DNA level. We transmit information by telling a story in a way that's going to stay in people's minds. When I think about Mike's contribution to our business results at Libro Credit Union, it's hard to even know where to start. Um, Mike is responsible for communications across Libro Credit Union. So anything regarding um, owner communication, so that's to our customer base, our leadership team, where they go out to um, speak to engage uh, business owners or uh, speak on behalf of our company. Mike is really penetrating all of those opportunities for Libro. So I believe our business results in every aspect is leveraged by his success. When I think about Mike's opportunities with communications, it's not just what he brings to the table, but how he leverages others to communicate well. So Mike has implemented and operationalized thought leadership for Libro Credit Union, and I believe that's really leading our industry voice um, and business growth. The thing about being a communicator is you can't do it all yourself. Really what you're doing is equipping other people to communicate well and so teamwork is built into the whole thing. I was a journalist for many years and continue to do that in my spare time just quietly off the side of my desk, little bits of freelance stuff um, and you learn pretty quickly as a journalist that ethics matter. Here are the rules, there are two rules. Rule one, tell the truth. Rule two, do the work. That's it. As long as you do those two things then your ethics will stand up. I put this nomination forward for Mike because it was about time. Mike really shines and um, the community of London needs to know that. I am deeply honored, deeply embarrassed. I'm much more comfortable being the person holding the camera than the person in front of the camera. But thank you so much for the recognition. After this, I will go back to my imposter syndrome and hide very, very carefully in a darkened room and cringe. Congratulations again to Mike Donaghy on being named an Outstanding Communicator Award finalist. We are now going to move on to our Virtuoso Award winners. Now there are three types of Virtuoso Awards. Rather than being scored against each other, entries are scored against the global standards of the profession using IBC's seven-point scale of excellence. Awards of merit are given for entries that are scored between 5.0 and 5.24. Awards of excellence are given to entries that score above 5.25, and the best of the best award is given to the top scoring entry from each division, so long as the division has at least three awards of excellence winners within it. So first up, we have Division One Communication Management. This division recognizes projects, programs, and campaigns that are guided by a full communication strategy. Entrants must demonstrate how their project applied a full range of planning and management skills, including research, analysis, strategy, tactical implementation, and perhaps most importantly, evaluation. Our first category is internal communication. And congratulations to the London Police Service and Roxanne Bobian for winning an award of excellence for their Stronger Than You Know campaign. 
And next up, we have category seven, marketing, advertising, and brand communication. Congratulations to Libro Credit Union for winning an award of merit for their hashtag My Life Here project. Next up is category eight, customer relations. Drum roll, please. Congratulations to St. Joseph's Healthcare London for winning an award of merit for their Doc Talks Community Health Lecture Series. Now, moving on to category nine, media relations. Congratulations to Lawson Health Research Institute for winning an award of excellence for announcing a new type of vaping related lung injury. Another congratulations to Lawson, Lawson Health Research Institute for winning a second award of excellence for profiling fecal transplants to treat melanoma. And now for category 10, community relations. Congratulations to Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority who won an award of merit for the Gordy Howe International Bridge Project. Next up, Congratulations to Blue Water Health for winning an award of merit for engaging the public in developing an integrated and community master plan. And last in this category, congrats to London Community Foundation and SageCom for winning an award of excellence for their project, Vital Signs. Don't forget to keep that applause going in the chat. Now it's time for category 15, Corporate Social Responsibility. Congratulations first to Northern Commerce for winning an award of excellence for the Nature Fresh Farms Holiday Giveaway. Moving on to category 16, nonprofit campaign. Lashbrook Marketing and Public Relations won an award of excellence for new Canvas of Life. Congrats. And we're now announcing a winner from a new and important category for this year, Category 17, which is diversity and inclusion. And congratulations to the City of London for winning an award of merit for the City of London's first annual Newcomer Day. And that's the end of our division one. Congrats to all those winners. Yes, congratulations. Now let's take another moment, this time to learn more about our Outstanding Communicator Award finalist, Julia Osterman. Outstanding communications to me is when the true spirit of the organization comes through, regardless of what the format is, whether it's online, internal, external, whether it's to government officials, whether it's to the board of directors, where uh, communication is able to not only give that transparently to those audiences, but also frankly is able to help shape it and move the direction if it needs moving. A lot of people, a lot of clients, uh, internal clients will come to us and ask for campaigns or right? have ideas and they want to execute something. And I'm always going back to what's the goal? What's the communications goal and why are we doing this? So it's always teaching people and always talking to people about driving it back to business results. And the business results might be, in our case, influencing Queen's Park. In a previous industry, it might have been getting more users or more sales. Uh, no matter what the organization is, it's always about the why. So I wanted to put this nomination forward for Julia because I'm just astounded by the work that she's done over the last uh, few years alongside her team with the complete overhaul of all the communications within the organization, the development of the intranet, which has been amazing, and the sheer volume and dedication of Julia and her team during the pandemic. The big thing about communicating through the pandemic was really ensuring that the community uh, was able to understand science versus fear. We made a, a, a deliberate decision to become the voice of the pandemic in our community, and we became that voice. And through that initiative, we have seen, um, you know, some of our social results have, you know, gone up 5,000%. Um, our, our community's impression of us and, and kind of belief in us, and we measured a whole series of different ways, has, has never been better. Someone once said to me to conduct public relations or conduct communications as if the whole organization depended on it. And that was told to me very early on. And uh, I think it's really true because it gives you an ethical framework or an ethical lens to view every situation through. I have always um, been 
of the ilk that it's about telling the truth and then proving the truth. Julia is amazing at giving back to our community. Uh, she is always willing to listen to all of our community partners. She is very eager to work with our community partners as well. Um, her use of social media, especially during the pandemic, and being open, honest, and transparent about what was going on within our hospital and community has made a huge, huge difference. I'm really blessed. I have a really great team. I am so flattered and honored to be chosen as a finalist for this award. Um, I love communications and I've been doing it for 28 years, I think. Um, this is a huge honor and I'm very flattered. Congratulations, named an Outstanding Communicator Award finalist, Julia. Now we're going to move on to Division 2 of the Virtuoso Awards, Category 18, Communication Research. Entries in this division recognize the importance of research and measurement as the foundation for strategic communication work. We have one winner this year. Congratula congratulations to Jane Antoniak for winning an Award of Merit for her entry, Canadian University President's as social media communicators. So we're now just about halfway through tonight's winners. Um, by the way, I wanted to mention that you can find a full list of, of the Virtuoso winners on the Virtuoso Awards website. And I would encourage everyone to go on, take a look and Google some of the works. So you can see these excellent projects in action. Wow, Katie, this Virtuoso cocktail is tasting pretty good. How's yours? It's delicious and very refreshing. Yum. I wonder what everyone in our audience is drinking tonight. Maybe we should uh, do a little poll and see what they tell us. Yes, let's do that. So while we're doing that, we're now going to move on to the final division of the Virtuoso Awards, which is communication skills. So this division includes marketing and communication elements that showcase technical skills, such as writing, design, and multimedia production. Entries in this division are generally more tactical in nature, but entrants must demonstrate strategic alignment, the creative process, and measurable results tied to those objectives. So first up, we have category 20, which is special events, um, and we're announcing six winners from this category this year. So first, congratulations to the Entrepreneur Support Network Committee for winning an award of merit for the London Can Exchange event. And next up, we have a student award. Congratulations to the student interns at King's University College for winning an award of merit for the project Bell Let's Talk Day at King's University College. Next, we congratulate Lawson Health Research Institute for winning an award of merit for the event PIR Open House 2018. Also, Western University has won an Award of Excellence for the International ACAC Conference. Congratulations. And last but not least, congratulations to Lawson Health Research Institute and the Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry at Western University for winning an Award of Excellence for London Health Research Day 2019. Before we move on to the next category, let's take a moment to hear about one of our three Communications Champion Award finalists, Mike LaPayne. Well, Blue Water Health is a large organization. We have many staff, physicians, and the public at large that rely heavily on us. It's extremely important that uh, how they perceive us is viewed favorably. And effective communications of professional communications allows uh, the, the snuffing out of the rumor now. Rumors can be very caustic to an organization. Rumors can then shape perception of your organization. And it's very important that our staff and physicians and the public at large have a great perception of Blue Water Health. We rely heavily on community. As a public hospital, we rely heavily on community support. And so the communications mandate helps us achieve that goal. Michael Payne is the embodiment of a communications leader, of an excellent communications leader in that not only does he believe in the power of communication, little c and big c, but he actually walks the walk and talks the talk. Uh, Mike is the first person to recognize that if we have a great story to tell and we're not telling it well, 
then the whole operational side is going to fall apart. He's the person who puts together both the strategy and the operations and overlays them with communications, understanding that communications really needs to be at the table. Um, I sit on the senior executive table and um, I have a voice at the table and my team has a voice at the table. And, when we look to change and innovate, um, it's never, ooh, that's not how we do things at Blue Water Health. It's like, that sounds really cool, let's bring it on. Well, I value communications to the point that um, I have the chief of communications on our executive team. So in truth, anything that comes out of the executive team gets uh, passes through the communications department to ensure consistency, to ensure completeness, and to ensure everyone is hearing the same message as the way it was intended. What I've learned in many, many years of leadership is I'm going to twist an old axiom about real estate. There's three things you know about real estate, location, location, location. I really, I say to buddy leaders, there's three things you need to know about uh, leadership. Communication, communication, communication. If you communicate effectively, people clearly understand what your expectations are. They don't misinterpret what you're saying. During the pandemic, when you're in a, a crisis situation like we're in now, communications is probably the most effective tool we have at our disposal as leaders. We have seen in countless jurisdictions that leaders get into trouble through bad or um, uh, imprecise communications. So ensuring you're always on message, ensuring that uh, the public and your staff are getting clear communications inspires confidence in them and they know they're getting consistent messaging. So this pandemic has really taught us that the value of communications and the communication to help quell the panic. Mike understands that every leader in the organization is a communicator, and Mike is the living example of that. You know, we'll find that a certain team, for example, through pandemic, uh, was particularly struggling, and he would go into that team and round with them and make sure that everyone was okay and how they were feeling and feeling safe, and feeling motivated and feeling engaged, and he'd follow up with their leader to make sure that their leader had key messages to also kind of go back and, and strengthen the same, the same kind of dialogue. He's just a natural communicator. Having been nominated, I, I'm very proud of the fact that um, someone saw something in me that uh, saw that it was worthy of a nomination. So I'm, ex I'm extremely pleased that I'm viewed this way by uh, our communications team and the hospital in general. And I'm, I'm honored. Congratulations, Mike, on being named a communications champion finalist. Robert, let's take a second check on the results from our poll to see what people are drinking tonight. Yeah. Okay, okay. Wine always. I can agree with that. No alcohol on work nights, 33%. Okay, we're responsible. We're now moving on to Virtuoso Awards category 22. Audio and visual. First in this category, we have another congratulations to Blue Water Health for winning an award of merit for their Blue Water Health recruitment project. And in this category, congratulations to MC Spirit Studios who are receiving an award of excellence for the video titled Pride London Festival 2019 Highlight Reel. Congratulations once more to Blue Water Health for winning an award of excellence for Cheyenne's story. Wow, Blue Water is really cleaning up tonight. And the final winner for this category. Congratulations to Housing and Ancillary Services at Western University for winning an award of excellence for getting ready to welcome you Mustang's video. So we're now moving on to category 24, which is publications. We have five winners to celebrate this year. First up, congratulations to Blue Water Health for winning an award of merit for their Blue Water Health annual report. Next, congratulations to London Health Sciences Center for winning an award of merit for their entry, The Page, a special accreditation issue. And congratulations to Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry for winning an award of merit for their achievements report. Also, congratulations to Western University for winning an award of merit for their entry, Impact Western, The Extraordinary Campaign, Celebration Edition. Western is also cleaning up tonight. 
And last in this category, bravo to Fanshawe College for winning an award of excellence for their publication, the Fanshawe Annual 2019. And that brings us now to our last category of the Virtuoso Awards, which is category 25, writing. So first up, congratulations to Blue Water Health for winning an award of merit for their article titled Culture of Kindness, Canadian Nursing Journal. And last but not least, congrats again to Blue Water Health for winning an award of excellence for their project, Cool Place to Work. What a year for Blue Water with all those awards. Congrats, guys. Of course, Katie, we do still have two more Virtuoso Awards to announce, the best of the best. But first, why don't we hear about another of our communications champion finalists? You bet, Robert. We now want to recognize communications champion finalist, Lynn Logan. While we weren't able to coordinate a video with Lynn this year, we want to tell you a little bit about her and why she was nominated. Lynn Logan is Vice President, Operations and Finance at Western University. She is a senior leader who clearly understands the value of communications in driving business results. Effective communications is integral to the daily operations at Western as it supports the learning journey of nearly 40,000 students, our future leaders. Lynn Logan works closely with Western Communications and Public Affairs team to provide authentic, timely and comprehensive communications on matters of strategic importance to the organization and the community. A dynamic and highly regarded leader, Lynn is committed to engaging and informing internal and external stakeholders, as well as recognizing the value of contributions made within and beyond Western Gates. Congratulations on being named a finalist, Lynn, and thank you for championing, championing the strategic value of communications. And now the moment you've all been waiting for to help us reveal the winners of the 2020 Virtuoso Best of the Best Awards. Please welcome our IBC pre president, Megan Zinn. Thank you, Katie. And thank you everyone for being with us tonight. I'm thrilled to see the return of Virtuoso with so many of our peers being recognized for strategic work that goes above and beyond. I'm honored to be announcing the winners of the Best of the Best Awards tonight. These awards recognize the top scoring entry from each division. In order to be awarded, there must be at least two entries in the division that have earned an award of excellence. We have two winners tonight, one for communication management and one for communication skills. Each winner will be given a chance to provide a few remarks to celebrate their remarkable achievement. Firstly, congratulations to the team at Lashbrook Marketing and Public Relations for winning a Best of the Best Award in Division I Communication Management for their entry, New Canvas of Life. We are being joined by Lori Lashbrook, who will accept this award on the organization's behalf. Lori? Thank you so much. This is really um, a fun evening, but I have to say not quite as much fun as when we do it in person. And I'm really uh, missing that opportunity to see you all and party on a little bit. But I am really pleased to be here and so grateful for this award tonight. And as I get to accept the award, I just want to be sure to say that it's a team effort and the amazing team at Lashbrook really um, outdid themselves on this particular project and I wanted to specifically recognize uh, Tristan Joseph who took the lead on this um, particular initiative and uh, Renee Pellin who at the time was just an intern at Lashbrook and uh, was very much a part of this project. So this has been, um, this project was really a labor of love for me um, when the transplant unit came and asked if we could support them in their fundraising event, it was impossible for me to say no because they had saved my husband's life. So um, we did this entirely pro bono and I would say that makes it even more exciting to, to win this award. So it was all about storytelling. Uh, the event itself um, was a combination of a musical evening and an art auction. 
we were able to find six artists who were participating in the auction who had been touched, their lives have been touched by uh, organ donation and transplantation. So we did uh, really great videos featuring these individuals doing their art and talking about their experience. So um, I wanna also thank uh, Nick from Take Five Video who we talked into also supporting this project in a, in a pro bono uh, nature, he's such a great guy. So the stories um, were very powerful. We had the surgeon who, who performed the first transplant, liver transplant in Canada. We had transplant um, recipient, young woman. We also had a fellow who had donated a kidney to his sister. We had a really good um, wide variety of, of stories to tell and it just brings back that point how important it is to tell powerful stories. So these stories rolled out on a website that we created. They were on social media, digital advertising, of course, and in, uh, in traditional media relations. So they met their fundraising goal. And I think equally important, we met our goal, which was to really have a conversation going in the community about organ donation and transplantation. So it's an honor for me to get this award. Thank you so much. And I just want to also say we only entered one this year, but we will be back in a big way next year. Thanks again. Congratulations again, uh, Lori and the entire Lashbrook team. Thank you. And for uh, the best of the best award in division four, communication skills, Congratulations to the Blue Water Health team who have won for their entry, Cheyenne Story. We're being joined tonight by Julia Osterman who will accept this award on Blue Water's behalf. Hi, thanks so much for having me tonight. I'm sure you get, you're tired of hearing our name. I do apologize, um, I get that. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to see this video, um, Google Cheyenne, C-H-E-Y-E-N-N-E, -E, and, uh, and Blue Water Health, and it'll come up. And it, I challenge you to do this with a dry eye. So working in healthcare, so I've spent a third of my career in agency, a third of my career in corporate, working on Bay Street in Toronto, and then a third of my career in healthcare. And working in healthcare, you know, uh, telling our story is not always easy because you're dealing with people's privacy, dealing with people's personal lives. And the biggest challenge we had, um, frankly, at Blue Water Health, one of the challenges we really had was telling the stories, story of mental health. It was very difficult. We're a community in crisis. There's lots of um, uh, challenges like other communities and, and drug and mental, uh, drug and alcohol addiction. Uh, and we really needed a champion, a woman or a man or an individual who'd come forward and tell that story. And there's a lot of stigma associated with it. So uh, almost exactly a year ago, we had a one year anniversary of our residential withdrawal management program. And there was a beautiful young woman who stood up and said, I'm clean and this is why. And she told her story and we were blown away. And she, you know, everyone said we couldn't, we, we couldn't go there and you know, you have to be very delicate. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> and to her care team who trusted us with the delicacy of her story and to Cheyenne who was so beautiful in telling her story and to Paradox Images who captured it so amazingly on film and to the, you know, over 80,000 people around the world who viewed this story. Um, thank you. Um, I am blessed to, to tell the stories of people who, um, come to us for their care and hopefully get better. So uh, thank you so much for, for this. Um, it is probably one of the most moving stories I've ever done and, uh, and I'm super excited for the team. I have a great team. Uh, I, like Lori said, it's all about storytelling and uh, you know, having come from Bay Street working, having worked in really widgets and moving to people <laughs> in healthcare, there's no shortage of great stories. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Well, congratulations once again to Lashberg and to Blue Water and to all of our Virtuoso Award winners. Uh, you have done outstanding work as communications professionals in our region. So we have one last poll to answer. Let us know your thoughts on what pandemic category should be added to the 2021 Virtuoso Awards. These polls are fun. Thanks, Megan. So before we announce our outstanding communicator and communications champion recipients, we have one more communications champion finalist to recognize, Daryl Longworth. We weren't able to coordinate a video with Daryl this year, but we want to share with you a little about him and the ways in which he champions communications. 
So Chief Longworth was nominated by Roxanne Bobian. She shared how he exemplifies what it means to be a communications champion, both in his current role as chief at Woodstock Police Service and in his previous role as deputy chief at London Police Service. He's been a strong advocate for advancing the communications function. In Roxanne's words, Chief Longworth, quote unquote, gets communications. He understands the role that communications professionals play in strategically telling the organization's story to all stakeholders and the need for having communicators both present and heard at the leadership table. He's also very supportive and receptive of his team's ideas. When Roxanne proposed a mental wellness and anti-stigma campaign called Stronger Than You Know, he was, the, he was the biggest supporter. The campaign has now went on to win multiple awards, including a virtuoso tonight. Chief Longworth is an exceptional communicator himself, acting as a spokesperson for the organizations in which he serves, building excellent relationships with local media, community partners, and internal stakeholders. As Roxanne noted in her nomination, Chief Longworth is an exceptional leader in every sense of the word. He trusts his people, empowering and inspiring them to do their best work. And he is a strong advocate for the value of transparent and open communications. So congratulations to Daryl on being named as a finalist for the Communications Champion Award. So you've now heard about each of our outstanding communicator and communications champion finalists and how they are all deserving of these awards, uh, but of course we can only have one winner for each. And so to announce this year's award recipients, please welcome to your screens, IBC London past president, Merrick Kubo. Thank you, Robert. Let me first echo congratulations to all of our winners tonight from the student awards to the Virtuoso Awards. Virtuoso really is back. Last year, we identified a gap with our outstanding communicator award. We were receiving incredible nominations, ranging from C-suite executive leaders who valued their communication team to exceptional communicators who practice their profession. Narrowing the selection down to one recipient each, each year was extremely difficult, leading us to the realization, why not just have two awards? It's clear we made the right decision. This year, we have exceptionally strong finalists for both the Outstanding Communicator Award and the, Outstanding Communica and the Communications Champion Award. Choosing each recipient was a difficult decision for our evaluating committee this year, which consisted of myself as then president, Andrew Kozowski as then past president of IABC London, and Laurie Lashbrook as our member. Each finalist is deserving of the award in their own right. Let's all raise our glasses to each of them. First up, we are going to announce the 2020 recipient of the Outstanding Communicator Award. Congratulations to this year's recipient, Julia Osterman, Chief Communications and Public Affairs at Blue Water Health. Now, let's hear a few words from Julia. Hi again. Wow, uh, 2020 has been an interesting year for me. <laughs> I moved from the GTA to Sarnia and I moved to a hospital. Actually, we have two locations and it's um, about the size of uh, Toronto Western or Michael Guerin Hospital in, uh, in Toronto. So it's 320 plus beds, big hospital. Um, and everything was great. And then the pandemic hit. So this is a particularly meaningful award and I am uh, incredibly grateful. I am grateful to um, the Academy. Now, I'm grateful to the, the nominating committee. I am grateful to my board of directors who nominated me, uh, an employee, Stephanie Van de Ven, who nominated me. I'm incredibly grateful to my phenomenal team who worked seven days a week for five months straight. Um, uh, congratulations to Mike as well. It's an honor to be nominated with you. Um, I guess my one thought is, as we move into, frankly, the unknown, and as we move into what is going to be continued uh, disruption, there has never been a place where communications is more valuable. So to everyone on the call, uh, to everyone and participating in the Zoom, for everyone who has gone through the process of submitting awards and learning from them and moving forward and all the rest, um, I think this is communicators, this is the, the, the time for communicators. I think the, the corporate, side of the world is starting to figure out our value and uh and i i'm delighted 
that this year I have this award and I am delighted to support um, IABC London and, uh, and everyone on the call to, to, to reach for it next year as well. Thank you so much. Take care. Congrats again, Julia. And now for the Communications Champion Award. Congratulations to the 2020 re recipient, Mike LaPayne, President and CEO, Blue Water Health, and what a night they are having. Unfortunately, Mike wasn't able to join us tonight. However, in the style of the Oscars and Grammys, he has sent us a video message. Oh, our sound isn't working. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty. The perils of a live event. Good evening. I'd like to begin by uh, thanking the International Association of Business Communicators for honoring me with this award. It's not something I ever aspired to as I didn't realize it existed, but I recognize that uh, in business communications is absolutely critical. I'm deeply humbled that uh, experts such as yourselves have uh, seen my contributions in the light you've seen it. I've always felt that uh, communications is absolutely critical to the success and strategy of any organization, regardless of your in, uh, industry. Perception is reality in many cases, and the perception of any organization is largely shaped by how effective your communications department is able to uh, effectively communicate your messages. In this unprecedented time, uh, the importance of the good communications department has been amplified. Seen during the COVID crisis, uh, a lot of a lot of panic, a lot of misinformation, and in my particular organization, which is a large community hospital, we've been looked to for leadership, and our communications department has done a a tremendous job allaying the concerns and ensuring that science is put ahead of panic and ensuring that people have a calm and rational approach to how to deal with these um, unprecedented times. I'd like to thank you all for the work you do every day. It's critically important. It's actually important for society to get clear, concise, and consistent messages, and it shapes the overall public dialogue. Again, Thank you. I'm deeply humbled to receive this award, and uh, I hope you continue to do the great work you do. Congratulations again to Julia and Mike. Their commitment and support of communications, not only during our current pandemic, but every day, is inspiring and appreciated. And I assume if they answered the poll, there's going to be a few headaches at Blue Water tomorrow. I would also be remiss if I did not thank the two people responsible for our awards program and celebration tonight, Robert DeLate and Katie Forbes. I am grateful for their unwavering commitment to our local awards program, even in the face of our pandemic. It is because of them and their team we are able to celebrate tonight, and I truly thank you both. Thank you, Merrick. Cheers to that, everyone. <laughs> now, before we... Um, before we extend a number of important thank yous, we want to take a moment to recognize this past year's National Silverleaf and International Gold Quill Award winners. These individuals represented our region on the Canadian and global stages. Firstly, congratulations to the 2019 Silverleaf Award winners. Lashbrook Marketing and Public Relations were recognized with an award of excellence for their project, New Canvas of Life. And London Police Service and Roxanne Bobian were recognized with an award of excellence for their Stronger Than You Know campaign. Congratulations. And congratulations again to the London Police Service and Roxanne Bobian for winning a Gold Quill Award of Excellence for their Stronger Than You Know campaign. This is a major achievement for Roxanne and London Police Service with recognition on the global stage. We do encourage each of tonight's winners to review the feedback from their evaluators and consider submitting to the Silverleaf Awards or the Gold Quill competition. IBC International has already started teasing the 2021 Gold Quill Awards with a uh, call for entries launching soon. So this is the perfect time for you to renew your IABC membership 
because among many other perks, you will save on your gold quill, your silver leaf, and your virtuoso entries. Now, before we wrap up the evening, we would like to thank our fellow board members who all work together as a chapter to make 2019 and 2020 a great year for our members and showed us tremendous leadership in our community. We would also like to thank our 2019-2020 Virtuoso Awards Committee for their support and dedication to, uh, to the Virtuoso Awards program. Their creative vision will help us bring Virtuoso Awards back to life for an in-person event uh, for years to come. We would also like to thank our current 2020-2021 Board of Directors for their unwavering support to help make this evening possible. We look forward to another creative year ahead with many exciting things planned. We also want to extend our gratitude uh, to our 2020 Virtuoso Award evaluators. So this group of experienced professionals dedicated their time and their expertise, uh, despite the overwhelming demands of the pandemic, to ensure that our awards uh, uh, entrants were evaluated fairly and provided with meaningful feedback. The awards program would not be possible without their support, so thank you. Yes, thank you. And finally, we'd like to especially thank Andrew Kozowski, IBC London past president and the current vice chair for IBC Canada East Region for his help in planning and managing our tech tonight. We will, we will be sharing a survey to everyone who has tuned in. Continuous feedback is important to us and we would love to hear your thoughts. Also, later this year, we will provide more details on the 2021 Virtuoso Awards. We know there will be plenty of great work to highlight. Lastly, IBC London's annual general meeting will take place virtually on September 24th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. Everyone is welcome to celebrate our achievements of the past year, learn from our challenges, and plan for an exciting future ahead. Visit our website or social media channels. We hope to see you there. And if your IBC membership is up for renewal soon, it's a great time to think about renewing. October is member month and we'll be sharing details soon about the great deals you can take advantage of. More than ever, the last several months have put a spotlight on the need for excellent communication in all industries. As a member of IBC, you are part of a global community that supports each other, shares best practices, gives you all the tools that you need to succeed. Thank you everyone and have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much for joining us. Time for a drink. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. I hope everyone tried the virtuoso or some sort of rendition. I'm signing off, Lori. Congratulations on your best of the best. <laughs>